Hey folks, I'm Howard Lux. I'm Jeff Berg. Two orthopedists a few hundred miles away. We've known each other for many years. We have a long history of doing this for over 20 years each. Uh, we're bringing that experience to you, uh, hopefully to help you address some common or orthopedic problems that you have or some questions that you have. Today, we're gonna to talk about cortisone injections. We're going to talk, talk about what cortisone is, what problems should be treated or can be treated with cortisones, which problems shouldn't be treated with cortisone. So cortisone is what, Jeff? So cortisone is a mixture of uh, lidocaine, which is a numbing medicine everybody's pretty familiar with. Your dentist has been giving it to you for years. And a steroid, an injectable steroid. Not the kind of steroid that makes you big and muscular but it's a steroid uh, geared primarily for injections and for reducing inflammation. Right, so in certain people such as diabetics, we have issues with steroids, right? Well, let's just get that out in front. Um, if you're diabetic and you get a steroid injection, it's gonna raise your blood sugar. So you gotta be careful if you're fully controlled. Now, um, there are people who inject steroids everywhere and anywhere, right? What's, what's yeah, I think, um, you know, as time's gone on, we, we've learned uh, that steroids are not risk-free, that uh, cortis cortisone is not risk-free, and there's some risks, um, particularly, um, I think in the past, people were more liberal in injecting into healthy uh, joints where the cartilage was healthy, and I think most um, realized that the lidocaine and perhaps even the steroid can damage the cartilage with repetitive injections. Um, and then around tendons, we, we know that, um, that uh, steroids can uh, damage soft tissue slightly. It can uh, get rid of some fat, which some people might like, um, but can also damage uh, some of the nearby tendons and ligaments. So I think even, even though we're, people still use cortisone, and I surely do, um, we're probably using it more judiciously, lesser, lesser amounts, less frequent. Um, but I, I think it still could be effective in, in, in appropriately used cases. Agreed. So let's just get out of the way of the areas that shouldn't be injected. So the, your Achilles tendon should never be injected with cortisone. And your, yeah. Your so, patella and quadricep tendons also never injected because uh, they are going to rupture. They're going to rupture two to three months after your injection. Uh, because, uh, the steroid can cause further degeneration and degradation of that tendon. Now, a common area for to get these injections is um, tennis elbow. But tennis elbow, uh, yeah, I mean, you have to listen to this. Tennis elbow is not an inflammatory condition. It's degeneration. So if we inject steroids, there's actually a risk we're going to worsen that process. There's some research that shows that the steroid works on the nerves in the area. So you're not actually taking away any inflammation, it's dulling the pain because you're dulling the nerve fibers in that region for a few months. Yeah, what I tell my patients, so I do occasionally inject for tennis elbow, but I, I do it in a little different way. I think years ago people injected it because they thought they were curing something. I'll be straight up with my patients. I'll tell them, we're not curing anything. Your body's gonna heal this or not. Uh, but what, if I inject for steroid, uh, steroid in there, it's to buy some time. And I won't give repetitive injections, but sometimes I've found if I give an injection, the patient might be symptom-free for four to six months, and during that time, that tendon may heal. Now, you're right. You can do some damage, but some of it's a risk-benefit analysis. You know, I have a patient that can't work, can't sleep, and if I don't give them an injection and buy them four to six months, they're going to have surgery. So sometimes in that patient, it's helpful. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't really, at least in in my practice, seen any catastrophic problems using it sort of, as I say, judiciously and rarely. Um, and sometimes patients, you know, it's really helpful for them to keep going, keep moving forward. Agreed. Uh, I definitely think there's more of a role for its use in the shoulder um, and in the knee, uh, in, in arthritic conditions, especially the knee. You get someone in with a hot, swollen knee, uh, they're really uncomfortable. Um, and that's not their baseline, uh, and they have an acute exacerbation, so your arthritis just acted up. I think there's a, you know, a, a good role for that. 
Our, our academy doesn't agree with us, right? The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I think that uh, some of this is nuance, and it's hard to say just arthritis and say, um, you know, some patients get better. So I think uh, that's helpful to those patients. I will be honest with my patients and tell them that I don't know who's going to get better. I don't know uh, how much you would get better, and I don't know how long you would get better. And in fact, I can have patients uh, with arthritis in both knees look the same on x-ray and exam, and one responds and one doesn't. So I don't have a clue, but it's something that I can offer. And in my personal experience, I kind of think that if it's going to help, it's going to help in that knee that may be acutely inflamed like you alluded to. And so I usually will look for a little effusion, uh, which is some fluid in the knee that might indicate some kind of inflammatory process in the knee. But I think, you know, treating the person with arthritis who's really miserable you know, we don't have a tremendous amount of things to help them acutely. Right. And an injection has a very low risk in that patient uh, and may have an upside. So I, I think it's, it's worthwhile and I use it a fair amount. Agreed. What about shoulder pain? You know, these people with pain on the side of their arm, they're grabbing here, they're not sleeping at night, they're miserable. Yeah, I mean, you know, that arm, it's funny. People come in and tell you, it's not my shoulder, it's a right. side of my arm. But, <laughs> but that's shoulder pain for us. And, that, and that's common, and not everybody knows why you get pain over there. I mean, I have my thought that the bursa kind of runs down there, and there's a little, when we go in arthroscopically and look, there's a sort of cul-de-sac there, and I think some fluid pools, but some people feel it's other causes. But in those patients, I think that, uh, once again, a, a, an occasional uh, injection can be helpful. I, I usually won't do more than two in any given patient. I like to spread them out. Um, I'm not sure that there's any magic in the number of two or how long you wait between them. It's just my sort of thought. I'm trying to weigh the balance of risk between uh, and benefit. But I use it for that. And in the shoulder also, arthritis of the shoulder, uh, sometimes AC joint arthritis where your collarbone and your acromion meet uh, sometimes can be helpful in those patients as well. Agreed. Um, so with soft tissue injections, I wholeheartedly agree with Jeff, uh, one or two. Uh, is the most that I'll do uh, because the steroid will have a cumulative uh, bad effect on the tendon. In arthritis, uh, I don't think there's an issue you know, with getting uh, an injection every four or six months. Um, people come into the office all the time and say, oh, no, my friends have said I can only get two injections in my whole body and my whole life. Yeah, That's not necessarily the case. Uh, well, what I find is funny is, so we use them in arthritis to uh, try to help the patient and forestall them getting a knee replacement. And they're worried about further degeneration of their knee. Well, the treatment for further degeneration of the knee is a knee replacement. So it, if I can give you an injection that can push a knee replacement out, it doesn't really matter if there's a little further damage. It, it, you'll never get to the point that you can't have your knee replaced. So those patients, obviously, I'd give it more liberally. but. Uh, but I do have discussions with patients. They'll sometimes say, well, it helped for a week. Can I have another one? Right. You got to ask them, is that a practical way? Are you going to come visit me uh, 52 times next year and every year after? So, you know, think, the thing uh, that worries me is, you know, a lot of the literature now, especially on knee replacements and hip replacements, shows that any injection within three months of surgery raises the risk of infection. So, you know, if you're going to keep asking for those injections, you need to know that you have an increased risk of infection in, in that three-month window. I agree. Yep. Yeah, and I'll tell patients uh, if you're considering, because sometimes I'll come in, you know, I can't have that surgery for another couple months, can I have an injection? Right. you, you got to have that discussion so they don't put themselves at risk. All right, folks, so a lot of you like to get cortisone injections, like they're going out of style. Some like to avoid it, like the plague. Uh, hopefully, we helped you in determining what it's useful for and what the downsides are. Bye. Bye-bye.